om ajnana timirandhasya jnanam jana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha I've been asked to speak on family life in Krishna consciousness. It may seem strange that a sannyasi is speaking to Grihastas or Grihasta Honewale about um, family life. But as Prabhupada said, that I'm, please don't use Prabhupada's book for leaning on to write with. Use a telephone book or something like that. Yeah, there's some calming books here. You can put them to good use. Yeah. Um, the Prophet said, I'm doing so, uh, the Prophet said, I'm criticized for, um, for arranging marriages of my disciples, but I'm doing so to help them advance in Krishna consciousness. It may seem even the stranger that I'm coming from the Western countries and you're from India, but uh, the way it is now that the uh, the culture has broken down to a large extent so that modern, especially the educated, means Western educated young Indian people really don't know very much about their traditional culture at all. And as Srila Prabhupada said, if, if I examine everything in India about the traditional culture, I find that it's best for human society. And Actually, that's a fact because when we speak of Indian culture, we're we're really talking about Vedic culture, which Vede Narayana Sakshat. This is the Veda is non-different from Narayana. It's a Ved Shastra is given by the Supreme Lord, and all kinds of knowledge, both uh, material and spiritual, to help human society. Now. It's a very basic thing, actually, family life. The family life is the is the basis of uh, human society. But uh, people in the modern age don't know how to live according to this, because how to live happily in family life, because happiness in family life is, as Prabhupada writes, it's practically a myth in modern society. But modern society has made... I don't want this thing. <laughs> in in uh, human society they've made so much technological progress and they have invented their own theories of how society should be organized with sociology and psychology they've invented their theories they're so foolish they think that they can do better than what was going on previously but the actual result is that modern society is a complete disaster and uh, it's a great risk even bringing children into the world because you don't know they might shoot you ten years later or, or they might uh, s steal everything to get drugs and all kinds of horrible things uh, really horrible things I, uh, a few years ago I was, uh, no it was not a few years ago it was when was it 19 it was about 1989 was the last time I was in Sydney Australia and uh that time our, te our temple in, uh, it was in the very bad part of the city and and they said this this is the pl they just outside they pointed this is the place where the, the young boys from 13 or 14 years old come to sell their bodies M young children as uh, prostitutes male prostitutes because they had to, they needed drugs so they were ready to do anything so this is, of course, we don't expect our children to be that bad, but uh, you don't know. It's like you think, well, in it, we're in the end and we're better, but it won't be. It won't be very long like that because the, uh, India is uh, absolutely following the Western way. So you can't expect that, that whatever civility or civilization is still left over in Indian culture will remain very long if you're, you're absolutely adopting the Western ways, you're adopting all the Western problems. And, uh, India itself has its own social problems. Uh, someone brought up this this morning the topic of bride burning. So that's already there and you want to import all the Western problems too. So as I quoted this morning, I quoted from Prabhupada, it's not me, don't throw tomatoes at me, that uh, Prabhupada said the most, f Indians are the most foolish people in the world. 
because they have the best culture and they're giving it up to adopt the foolish culture. You already have the best thing and instead you adopt the foolish thing. So the, the foolish people are already foolish. But if you give up the best thing to take up the worst thing, then what is more foolish than that? Hmm. So, uh, anyway, you, now you're all coming to Krishna consciousness. So, actually all these things, these are not usually taught by the, these social usages and culture. They're not usually taught by... Not, by gurus means... Gurus are many. First guru is the mother. So these gurus, they t mother, father, grandparents, they teach all this kind of thing. The, the adhyatmic guru is for teaching we're not the body. We don't belong to this material world. Aham Brahmasmi, I am spiritual. But they, they could, the, the, these spiritual gurus were free to teach all these things because the, all the other usages of how to live as a human being, the Vedic culture, how to help us, it, which gives the basis for human civilization. The, the Vedic culture gives us a basis for spiritual development. That was already taught. But nowadays people don't have that. So the gurus have to teach. Uh, even you see when Prabhupada came to the West, he had to teach. There's, uh, after passing, sounds a little gross, but it brings the point home. After passing stool, you don't smear it around your backside with paper, but you wash it with water and then you take a bath. Of course, now modern Indians, they're very progressive, so they smear their backsides with paper and don't take a bath. So, because they've become more advanced, this ridiculous idea that everything in the West is more advanced. So, uh, Prabhupada had to teach all these things. How to wear a dhoti. Now I'm also teaching. I have to show Indian young men. They never wore a dhoti. They never apparently even saw a dhoti. So, uh, all these, when they come to Krishna consciousness, they have to learn all these things. So, but actually these things are supposed to be taught in the home. This was Arjuna's, one of his reasons he didn't want to fight. Because he said, if, 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 if all the men, uh, if all the kshatriyas or the protectors of society are killed, then women will be unprotected. And then they'll be exploited. And strishu dushtashu varshnaya jayante varna sankaraha. That if, if the women are unprotected and they're just left with, uh, uh, they're just left to be exploited by uh, unprincipled men, then the whole society will become full of Varna Sankara or persons of, the, the children are born according to the consciousness of the parents. So uh, they'll be, they will be a very poor class of children will be born. And that's what's happening nowadays. Traditionally, the uh, you see, it wasn't only the the marriage that was fixed according to Jyotish, and if you start a new business or griha pravesh or all this kind of thing, you do first you consult what is the right time for doing something important, right? Right time and date, and you don't do it in a you don't do it in a uh, in an inauspicious time. But even for begetting children, that is a very important thing. You should choose the right time, not just whenever you feel like it. Uh, so you should choose the right time, and then there should be garbhadhan sanskar, in which the consciousness is purified, so that you get good children. But without that, uh, if, if children are simply born in lust, then you can expect that they'll be wild and crazy, which is what is going on at the present time. So really, uh, of course, the older generation knows something. I, I know something because I lived for years among... Uh, well, I was for years in Bangladesh where the people are very backward there. So that means they're not very much educated. It means they have their old culture. <laughs> they didn't lose their old culture by the Western education. Now, they, now there's electricity everywhere and the TVs. It means in Bangladesh, it's the most... People in India don't know, but it's the second biggest Hindu population in the world after India. So I was moving mostly among the Hindus and uh, seeing how they lived. And and of course, living in India, I, I've, I, I'm mostly associating with the culturally advanced people or the spiritually advanced people. So I've, I've met with not only... Uh, 
sadhus and sannyasis. There are still some real sadhus and sannyasis in India. Most of them are cheetahs, but there are some real sannyasis also, real traditional sannyasis. So I've met, and but not only them, but very uh, cultured, traditional families still following all the traditional usages and ways of life and dedicated to dharma. Because family life in Vedic culture is meant for execution of dharma. One accepts a dharma patni. Wife is called dharma patni. That means one is supposed to, one marries for the sake of executing dharma. In the yagya, the dharma patni has to be present. You cannot perform yagya without yagya that is the uh, in traditional Vedic culture everything is centered for spiritual elevation every, yagya is performed so that a wife is required sannyasi doesn't perform yagya traditionally only the, the householders so they have very important function in society to perform yagyas so anyway this topic of family life in Krishna consciousness is a very big Topic and I, how we're supposed to condense it in one hour? Well, we can't. It's a big, big, big topic, um, especially in the modern age where it's a whole different paradigm. That culture is gone, and the whole way of life is gone. And uh, now we're taking up Krishna consciousness. But traditionally, people had the, the whole background was very supportive. The whole culture was Krishna consciousness. The, the, try to get this book. I thought we had copies here. This I, I made one book, Glimpses of Traditional Indian Life. That will give you... A, you can order that. Maybe uh, Madhav Gopinath Prabhu? Oh, yeah. okay. Maybe you could get a few copies. Or we could send from India. And uh, you can distribute it to... If we, that's the best way. Get them posted from India. That will be... That will give some very good insights. And... Uh, that's that's based on uh, recollections mostly of family life, of people who have lived in the traditional culture as it was quite widespread not very long ago. I've seen the whole culture disintegrate before my eyes in the almost 30 years I've been living in India. So uh, that that previously that culture was very supportive because. Everybody was into it. Everyone was... Uh, culture means more or less to everyone doing the same thing with the same ideal. So, uh, everyone was religious, pretty much. You know, there, were, there were hardly any... They weren't atheists. So they, everyone would rise early in the morning and, and do puja, part, jab, all these different things. It was... Uh, everyone... And uh, everyone would, there was no question of believing in God or not believing in God. It was just, it was so much part of life that the question didn't arise. Do you believe in God or not believe in God? Or, the, the question, it wasn't there. So the modern education and the whole modern way of life has changed all that. Um, so now you're coming to Krishna consciousness, but that background, that supportive background is not there. I often think of... Uh, of this culture, this Vedic culture, as, as being like a a tightrope for tra it acts as a tightrope for tan uh, uh, and sorry as a net underneath the tightrope for transcendentalists. Because in the Upanishads we have Kshurasya Dhara Nishita Duratya that uh, spiritual life is like a razor. It's very sharp. You can shave nicely and become clean, but if you're not careful, you're cut. So spiritual life means we're following principles and uh, aiming for a very high ideal. But we can fall also. We, we, can, we can wobble and shake. So it's something like walking a tightrope. It's, it's, if you go very... If, you, if you're not completely balanced and focused, a tightrope walker, he has to always... Watch, what's at the other, his goal, isn't it? If he looks down, he'll fall down. If he looks a little bit to the, to the side, he'll fall. He has to always look exactly. 
and he has to keep exactly straight on the on the tightrope and walk very carefully. Little inattention, and he'll fall down. But if there's a net, he won't get hurt. So the, the Vedic culture, it's like a it's like a tightrope, which is why I see that um, that mostly devotees from India, if they take to Krishna consciousness seriously, uh, if there's some slip due to Maya, they don't fall as badly as the Western devotees do, because the the Western devotees don't have the background of that culture. So they go, their, their tendency, if, if, the, if someone slips into Maya after practicing Krishna consciousness, it's not surprising because after all, we're in the atmosphere of Maya, we're in a very bad age. I'm not saying do it, but I'm just saying that it's, it's not surprising. But the Western devotees, if they fall, they mostly fall pretty badly because they, they, they go back to their old culture, which is pretty bad. Whereas in India, even now, even though there are many bad things in India, I'm not, when I say Indian culture, I'm not talking about the, the, the Bollywood movies and the uh, young girls in, in jeans having abortions and, or the bride burning. I'm, I'm talking about the original spiritual Indian culture, spiritually based in. Nowadays, there are so many bad things. But still, we find that generally among the... Uh, Indian middle class, there's, there's still there are many pious families or well-behaved people. Is it, do the Americans, and now you have so many uh, Indians living in the Seattle area, the Americans, they, they notice that, that the, the Indians are quite well-behaved. Does anyone ever make any comment like that, that they're peaceful people or any such thing? Does anyone ever note like that? No, it doesn't seem to be. We don't get any strong affirmation there. Yeah. Well, you, you certainly you, you don't see groups of Indians hanging out, getting drunk on the street corners, and this kind of thing. So maybe they just didn't notice. They're too busy getting drunk on the street corners to, to notice that the Indians aren't there. So uh, now I haven't really spoken very much about the detail. You probably want to know about the details, how to. Because here you're here, and you have Korea, and you have family, and you have Krishna conscious, and any one of them could take up all your time. You could, if you want to really get into your career, you could spend 24 hours a day. And that's what the people who really want to advance their career, they, they practically give their life to their career. But then what about your family? You're doing the career for the sake of your family, but then you never see your family. So what's the point? But the family also, you could also spend 24 hours a day looking at, you know, looking after your family and family affairs. There are so many things to do. And Krishna consciousness also, you can also spend 24 hours a day. And you have Korea and family and Krishna consciousness and how to balance it all. And usually what happens is that, that the Krishna consciousness gets squeezed into some, you know, three minutes or something and you're supposed to... But it doesn't work. You can't be Krishna conscious. It's, it's not like uh, three minutes a day, like drinking a cup of coffee or something drink a cup of coffee, get up in the morning, drink a cup of coffee and go to work. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Get, I'm not going to drink coffee anymore. I'm going to be a devotee. Get up in the morning, chant Hare Krishna three minutes and go to work. It doesn't work. <laughs> it requires time. We, we have to chant 16 rounds. Well, uh, that's going to take at least one and a half hours like that. Maybe a little less. But if you're chanting faster than, much faster than that, then it's going to, you're not really going to be hurling or something like that or jumping your beads. Or, so it requires time. You have to chant with attention. It takes some time. And we also have to have kirtan every day. We have to study the books. So it requires time. So how to find the balance? These, are, these questions didn't arise previously because people, very few people had careers. Only maybe a few people who were in... In, in the traditional life, I was talking about that yesterday, that... that you did your work in the day, and then when it's dark, it's dark, so you can't go on working all night anyway. And uh, I practically saw that in the villages in Bangladesh when I was living there, that after dark, people, they would chant Hare Krishna. What else are you going to do? There's no TV to watch, and there's, uh, there's nothing else. I mean, you could sit around and just talk nonsense, but because they had some spiritual culture, mostly the people, after dark, they would, with a lamp... They would read from Shastra or someone would explain 
and mostly in Bangladesh because the culture of the Hindus there is Goya Vaishnavism, they mostly chant Hare Krishna. But uh, so the, the, this problem didn't arise. There was time, and there wasn't a need. There wasn't this pressure to work hard and get ahead because you know the potter would make pots and the barber would shave people and the the brahmana would teach and or do puja and everyone the women would cook and look after the children and everyone had did what they did and it was you know they didn't have uh, three hundred thousand three hundred thousand dollar houses to live in but uh, they lived and they were peaceful and they were chanting they were making spiritual advancement and even they weren't so interested in working hard there's a story I'll tell you so that uh, one man came from the city, came from Bombay, and he big from the business school, and that's in Ahmedabad, the main one, right? Indian Institute of Management. So, okay, let's say he came from IIM, and he came to the village, and he saw at midday the villagers sitting in the shade, sitting and sitting around and resting, relaxing a little bit. You know this story. <laughs> Relaxing with his friends, saying, well, "What are you doing? You know, you should be working. You should be. You should work hard." And uh, what are you doing here? I, well, I'm sitting and relaxing with my friends. And when it gets a little cooler, I'll, you know, I'll go back to the fields. Oh, you have fields? Yeah, I have some fields. Uh, I can give you a scheme. You see, you can you can plant mangoes, and you can import the best seeds, and you can you can make uh, man- mango acha and then you can export it. I'll make a whole plan for you. You see, you, you in, make some profit, invest, and then buy more mango orchards, and within 20 years you can be a multi-millionaire. Patel's mango acha will be famous all over the world. <laughs> yeah, oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. So, what will I do with my millions of dollars? Well, then you can retire, and you can relax, and you don't have to do work and you can just sit and talk with your friends. Well, I'm doing that already. <laughs> so what's the point? It's a crazy civilization. Of course, we don't just say to relax with your friends, but relax with your friends, yeah. Relax and talk about Krishna consciousness. But who knows what relaxation is? It's, uh, people, they have to, nowadays to relax, people pay to go to get taught how to do yoga exercises and relax. And then you have to go and work to get the money to pay for the cost, and then you become unrelaxed. So it's it's insane. The whole thing is insane. Like I was saying this morning, both man and woman have to go to work because you have to earn enough money to pay the lawyer for the divorce fees later on. <laughs> so if if you don't go to if they don't if they don't both go to work, then how will you pay? You see, so. It's a completely insane society, but unfortunately we're living in it. Of course, people think this is our great fortune. We're, now we are successful. My life is a success. I have come to America. This is the definition of success. You see, the village person, he thinks, I'll go to Bombay. And the person in Bombay thinks, maybe I'll go to Dubai. And the one in Dubai is thinking, maybe I'll go to England. And, and best of all, America. So now you're here, and but now you're actually becoming successful by chanting Hare Krishna. I hope you're all chanting Hare Krishna. It's real success. To go beyond America, beyond the material world. Go to Krishna. That is real success. Go to Golok Vrindavan. Yadgatva Nanivartante Tadhama Paramanama. Go there never to return. So this is real success, and uh, actually... Uh, the American way of life, it means that everyone is a guaranteed failure. Because the purpose of human life is to develop Krishna consciousness. In the American way of life, we do, you can get everything else except Krishna consciousness. You can get everything material, but no Krishna consciousness. And no happiness either. No one's happy. It's a, the whole society is a disaster. So how to balance all these things? Well... You, Really, career demands, it's, it's very difficult to balance with Krishna consciousness. If you really want to be a great success and be a rival of Bill Gates, or at least one of his top workers and earn lots of money, then it's going to be difficult to be Krishna conscious. We have to set what our goals are. 
So that's what they say, right? In management school and the, the, these books, self improvement. And they say, first of all, set your goals. Well, what is our goal? We first have to see. And, and you have to sacrifice something. You can't, you can't get everything. So I would recommend that. Um, well, of course, there, I must recommend to be Krishna conscious. But to achieve that, then we may not be the greatest achiever in material terms. Of course, if you can do both, some people are very gifted. And if you can do both, and be, if you can be Krishna conscious and have a, uh, uh, what do they call that? A rising, going up in the world, career. Uh, I can't remember the word now. But uh, okay, that's all right. But uh, but really, we have we have to set our priorities. Even many people, uh, they're reali- I'm not even devotees. They're realizing that that uh, my if your career is spoiling your family life, then maybe better to put the family life first. I know, I, I many Gujaratis in England. They came in the 1970s with nothing by the grace of Idi Amin. In Uganda, they were thrown out. They were they were happy to be out with their lives. They only had the clothes they were wearing. They and so they came with nothing. But by work, hard work, they gradually developed businesses. And many of them they gradually got small stores. Many of them became news agents. And what else did they do? Mostly news agents, right? So uh, you'll find all the news agents in England were owned by Gujaratis, and now they got. They've gone on to other things. So they became small storekeepers. But their children, many of them, even though they're mostly Patels, they don't want to do business because they see my parents, they're, they're working literally from 6 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock at night. And they'd rather have, they're, they're becoming professionals like dentists or some 9 to 5 jobs, something like that. Dentists, opticians. And so because they say, well, you get sufficient money and you have time. So they're not even very spiritual, but they're seeing that it's, it's what, we have to see what our priorities in life are. What's the what's the use of working so much if you don't really have any family life? Srila Prabhupada told the story of um, that he'd seen in India in, in his business life, which was we're talking here about the 1940s and 1950s. That uh, one man he always used to get up early in the morning and come back late at night. So, uh, one day, uh, he was a businessman, so, and then one day for some, he, he took a day off or something. And very, after a few years, because the business, when you're running a business, the business is running you, especially a small business, and uh, you don't have time, you, you just have to do, you, the business demands, you can work 24 hours a day. So uh, one day he took a day off and then uh, his young son, who was six years old, he, he said to his mother, Who is that man? Oh, yeah. Prabhupada said he personally saw this. The child did not know his father. So what is the use? Uh, another point I was talking um, now it's expected that uh, women shall go to work also. But women, by nature, they have bodies which give birth to children. And children need a lot of looking after. Is that child running around? That child is there crying with no one there? No, you see, who's there? Mother is there. But if the mother is work, then the child can cry, can cry 24 hours a day. So children need 24 hours looking after. And it's not the same putting them in a kindergarten or leave, leaving, leaving them with someone else. It's not the same. They need... Uh, care and attention. And it's not that when they're five years old they go to school, they don't need care and attention. You can just forget them, but they need to come home to the loving arms of their mother who has cooked for them with love. There's a difference, isn't there, between, we say, home cooking. What's so great about home cooking? You can, you can also go to McDonald's or you can take something out of the deep freeze and put it in the microwave and uh, within seconds it's converted from from uh, a block of ice to something which is edible by people who eat such things. Hot. 
but there's no nourishment and there's no love. Canned food. It's, uh, cooking means, home cooking means the mother is cooking and just wants to see how the children are happy. Children and husband are happy and nourished and all. So the, the, the mother's place in the home is so important. But that's been minimized nowadays by they should also go out and work to get money because you think you can't live without it without the extra money but actually if you, the mother goes to work then you have to spend extra money for toys and things for the kids which won't make them happy uh, and you have to you, the, your food bills go up because you have to you either eat outside or you, you eat all this fan, what is it frozen can and rubbish food then you have to pay doctor's bills because you get sick because you're eating rubbish food fast food and all this kind of thing and you have to have extra clothes working clothes you have to pay transport bills. Usually the, the woman has to have a car also. So practically all your money goes. Whatever you spend, you lose it all and you lose uh, the affection of your children also. So don't be surprised if they, you know, when they grow up, they, they shout at you and they don't care what you say. Because if you haven't given them love, you won't get it back. And you may think, well, I love my children, but that's not just something theoretical. Money won't... Money... The, m this is the mistake that they, th they think that affection for children means you give them ice creams and you show your affection by giving ice creams and buying them toys and this and that. But, but then you have to give them time. They need time. Children need a lot of time. So a mother is required for that. But if she's at work, then she won't be able to. So, and, and nowadays they often think that, well, children are just, an, the women think, children are an obstruction in my career. But her career is to, to, uh, to look after her children. That, that, that by nature, by God's arrangement, women have such a body that they give birth to children. And they have such a mentality that they, they like children. If you see, if there's a, if there's a young baby, a uh, little baby, you'll see naturally the women, they, all the women will go, oh, the men not so much. They may a little bit, but isn't it? Definitely the women. And the little girls, five years old, they like to play with a doll, isn't it? Just like being like, from that age, from the beginning their instincts are there. And you'll find in, in the villages in India, the young girls, five years old, they start to carry the baby who's actually not much smaller than, not much smaller than her, but that natural tendency, motherly tendency. But modern society is killing that. By saying, oh, you all have to have a career and you have to be a a, a paratrooper or something. Women should do all the things, same things that men do. Why, why take an inferior position? But that, that apparently inferior position is actually, in terms of love, is superior position. You're just like I was in Bangladesh, I saw every man, he will keep his wallet, he will keep a picture of his mother, not his father. Keep a picture of his mother. So, uh, the modern ideas of how women should live, it's actually spoiling the family. And then the family is spoiled and the whole society is spoiled. And no one can be happy. And we can see that for all the sophistication and people in America, they're generally nice in their behavior. But look at the social problems. It's a disaster and it's getting worse all the time. And they're, they're, they don't know the the basic principles of how to live a happy life. They don't... I'm not even talking about Krishna consciousness here. I'm just talking about... Even on a material platform, they don't know the basic principles. That you don't... You don't endeavor more and more and more and more for money to buy so many things that you don't need. You do some work and you earn whatever. Actually, previously there wasn't even money. People didn't... There wasn't money. Nowadays there's money. But now there's money, so you have to earn... So, uh, you don't work so much. Life is not meant for working. Just to, uh, what is it? this roti kapra makan? These are the three basic necessities. It doesn't require so much work to produce them. But now it's roti, kapra makan, dishwasher, washing machine, car, video, TV, mixi. Uh, I, what, I'm out of touch yeah. with modern life. What else? Camera. Uh, there's no end. Furniture. All these things are not necessary. But we think these things are considered necessities in modern life. But they're not necessary. They're not actually necessary. 
And to get them, we have to work, 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 work. There's no end. These things are not necessary. We we think these things are necessary, but then they're not actual necessities. So the whole society is crazy, and and it's not just saying that. But you see, people are actually crazy. Other, you see, if it if if ch- if child violence is a major problem. We can understand that the, the, the children are extremely deser- disturbed. And even those who are not actually committing violence or taking drugs, which is probably less than 50% of the population of children in America who are not like doing some crime or, or who are not violent, who are not mentally disturbed, who, are not, who don't have suicidal tendencies, who are not taking drugs, that's probably less than 50% of the of the population under 15 don't fall, who do not fall into any of these categories but if if even those who don't fall into any of these categories they must also be highly disturbed and imbalanced isn't it so uh, it's actually a crazy society so i'm saying all these things just to try to convince you of this because you're living in this society but really we Although, to some extent, because you're living in it, you have to adopt some of its practices and usages, but don't adopt their way of thinking. And make, live your life differently, at least to the extent you can. The best thing is, for spiritual life, the best thing is to uh, arrange our situation in such a way that we can live in a more sane manner. But life is such that it's very difficult to do so at the present time, uh, therefore, we should have faith in the holy names of Krishna. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalo Nas Jeva, Nas Jeva, Nas Jeva, Gatir Anyata. We can get strength from chanting Hare Krishna. We have to make chanting Hare Krishna the center of our lives. Then we can have the, we require the spiritual strength to, to counteract this gross materialism which we're otherwise certain to be sucked into. Which is probably one reason why many of you like to take up this Krishna consciousness, because without that without a strong spiritual basis you're going to be you can see that this this way of life is extremely degraded and because you're pious you don't want to get sucked into that. So it's like that. In Kali Yoga there's there's great opportunity to be sucked into the whirlpool of materialism and then you don't have any strength, you get pulled down. But there's also great opportunity to go up. So we have to take shelter of the holy names very strongly. How to balance all these things? Korea, family, Krishna conscious. Our aim should be to be Krishna conscious and to make our families Krishna conscious. And whatever is required to do that, we should do. So earning some money is a requirement in modern life. Prabhupada had a an alternative actually which very few of our householders have had the courage to take up which is to go back to a more simpler way of life on the land and produce your own food And but like I say most devotees haven't had the courage to do so um, but if we are to live in this society we have to make time we find a job in which you don't have so much pressure even if it earns less money Money is not our main requirement. Our main requirement is Krishna consciousness. So if you can, mostly the well-paying jobs or the, the that requires that you you have to give your soul practically to the company, isn't it? They they're practically buying your soul, but don't sell your soul. There's, the selling of the soul comes from a a German book, Doctor Faust. He's he sold his soul to Satan. Satan said, "You, you give me your soul, and I'll give you so much material. Faci- I'll give you so much material facility." So he agreed. So we shouldn't sell our souls for the sake of material progress, uh, but we should keep very clearly in mind that Krishna consciousness is the goal of life, and have time. We have to have time for chanting Hare Krishna. We have to make time. It's required. If we're to advance in Krishna consciousness, which is required even to save ourselves from 
falling into deep materialism, then we have to, we need at least two and a half hours every day only for Krishna consciousness. That means we have to have kirtan every day, we have to have reading every day, and we have to have chanting the holy names 16 rounds a day. This is, this is not actually the minimum. The min, what we actually need is for sadhana, the program that Prabhupada gave, is a minimum of six hours a day. So if we say two and a, two and a half to three hours, that's, it's actually a compromise. But if we say you have to spend six hours in sadhana, then I think most of you will find, well, where is the time? Because modern life is such that, uh, that the pressure of work and the time spent to go there is so much. So I, I'm just speaking some basic principles, how you should organize your life. But it's a big topic. I wrote this Brahmacharya and Krishna Consciousness. It's this thick. I also have hundreds of pages of notes which, for writing a book, which I hope to write in future, but I have many important books to write. Hundreds of pages of notes for writing a book, Family Life in Krishna Consciousness. It'll be thicker because it's more complex. Basically, Brahmachari life means chant Hare Krishna and be happy. No complexities. Not very, very straightforward and simple. But family life means it's very. There are so many. There's economic considerations, social considerations, family considerations, and so many things. And so it's it's a big topic. How to bring up the children? Very big topic, especially. That wasn't a big. That wasn't a big. It wasn't a consideration. It was, it was just everything went on automatically. The children, uh, the the, because the spiritual culture is there. Then automatically the the grandparents who have a very important role nowadays nowadays uh, so many girls are making a condition that I'll only marry you on the condition that your parents your parents live separately their duty that's an important part of stri dharma is to care for the old people in the old age but now they're making condition I'll marry you on the condition you don't bring your parents to live with us. Because they don't want, they want to enjoy life. They have no sense of sacrifice. Stri dharma means uh, how, you see in Shastra says, women they are adored, they are worshipped. Why? Sannyasis are worshipped, isn't it? We say puja swamiji. Why are they worshipped? Because of their sacrifice. And mothers are, it's, mothers are worshipable because of their sacrifice. But they don't because they give themselves for the old members of the family, for the children, for the husband. They are emblems of sacrifice. That is glorious. One who sacrifices for others. But in modern life, it's just what I can get for myself. I, me and mine. Selfish. Very selfish. That's why they can divorce just like that. Because they say, well, I, I don't like this woman anymore. I don't like this man anymore. So... It, just divorce, finish. Never, never mind that. That uh, there's emotional devastation and the children uh, emotionally devastated. No, for me, what, what is my self-interest? So, um, what was I talking about? The women uh, looking after the old parents. So the grandparents, they have very important. It's not that just uh, nowadays you see grandparents; they'll just be sitting in front of the TV. So you think, what's the use of looking after them? But previously, uh, they're just in, they're just ignoring, they're just interfering with my sense gratification. They get sick, I have to look after them. But pr- and I want to enjoy myself. I want to go to parties with my boyfriend, never mind the husband, all this kind of thing, with uh, my with my husband's best friend. All these things are going on. So, uh, but previously the grandparents they would they would. Not only how you see that everyone brings their parents, isn't it, when they have a child? Because they want some help with looking after the children. It's not just, you know, we love you so much, please come to America. <laughs> but they bring them when there's some help needed. But previously, they not only help to look after the children. See, young people, they get married, usually they get married very young, and the girls are having children at the age of 13, 14. That was normal. It's the nature's arrangement. Now they say it's wrong. And the minimum age in India is supposed to be 18 because they're trying to cut the population, not very effectively. 
but uh, they, 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 they'll be young. So they're, they're, they're practically children and they're having children themselves. But the, the older parents there, they're already experienced and they help to look after. And they would, by parampara, they heard from their grandparents about Ram and Krishna and all these things, and they would teach this. And there was no need to go to school to be get taught morality classes or teach, you should respect your parents. If you have to be taught in school to respect your parents, then there's no hope of respecting them. If it's written in the school book, that means that they, they have no grounds to respect their parents. Therefore, they have to teach it, and they won't respect, because if it's just by something written in a book, you'll never respect anyone. People are respected for their qualities. But in the modern life, their parents, are, who will respect? Because they're just interested in their own sense gratification. They have nothing to train the children. They don't care to train, train the children. They let them grow up. They don't discipline them. They don't tell them, this is right, this is wrong, don't lie, don't steal. Just uh, sh shut up. You're making too much. I'm trying to listen to what's on the TV. Shut up. Keep quiet. That's all the training. There's no training. So how will they respect? So the, the parampara was there previously. The, 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 you, you see people, they keep, in, they keep pictures of their parents on the wall, their deceased parents. and uh, They have the highest regard because they were actually very saintly and noble people. But now, but who will... That was there previously, but now who will keep their parents, who will think of their parents with fondness? If they're, they're not saintly or respectable, they're just, the, the parents are just gross sense enjoyers, and, and the children will have no regard for them. But previously, generation after generation, they were, in the childhood they were trained in, automatically in the moral principles, which comes from hearing about Mahabharata, Ramayana, all these things. So it was an automatic thing. You didn't have to think how to bring up the children. It was just it just went on naturally, generation by generation. So uh, it's a big job nowadays to to do that, but it is the duty of parents to bring up their children in Krishna consciousness. It's uh, and it's a big question: Our education. Where will you send them for education? So this. The, the big topics you have to consider very carefully. Uh, I don't have time to discuss all these things. It, it can be quite complex. It's, uh, there's so many topics to discuss. I've, I've discussed mostly in a theoretical way here tonight. But there's so many nitty-gritty practical questions. And that's why, in, you see, the, the society was structured. There were brahmanas who could actually guide because there are general principles and how to particularly apply them in our lives according to the the specific situation we find ourselves in. Therefore, there are brahmanas to help guide and uh, and the, the elders would help guide in such a way. What it used to be, the young people were married but they were still uh, under the control of the parents so that they didn't, uh, they would be, until they were Actually, all and uh, everyone was under control. Everyone was disciplined. So the elders in the family, the man may be married, he may be fifty years old, and himself have grandchildren. But as long as his father is alive, he has to do what his father says. And that was a good system as long as the parents were themselves dharmic. But these things have broken down. So it's it's difficult. It's very difficult now in the. Family life is everything about life has become very difficult. So uh, we can go forward in spiritual life with Krishna consciousness, but we have to make Krishna consciousness very much the center of our lives. Um, as I said, I've spoken theoretically. If there are any more focused or specific questions, you could put them now. Don't be complacent. Don't think that you know. Those of you who have been brought up in a more cultured way, don't be complacent and think that you know we're bringing up our children in a very traditional kind of way because it's not possible to do so. In the home, you might be traditional in this and that, but, the, but when they go outside, they're exposed to everything else, and even in the home. So, be careful. Mm. Any, 
Any points for specific discussion? I'm not gonna. I mean, we could go on all night and all weekend also because it's a big topic. But I don't want to run very late because I also have to get up early in the morning. Definitely have to get up early tomorrow morning because I mean, generally I do anyway. But I have a flight at seven o'clock, so it's on to the next spot. So if, maybe we'll just discuss for a few minutes because we can't. We can't discuss these things. There's not enough time to discuss in great detail. But uh, if you are interested in that, to get some idea of the traditional way of life, then please see that book, Glimpses of Traditional Indian Life. Um, one of my disciples from Chennai, Aya means Brahmin family, He, after reading the book he said, everything in it was new to me. I knew nothing about it. He's in his twenties, from a, you know, you'd think South Indian Brahmin said, "I knew nothing. I knew. It was all new to me." So, I think many of you can learn from this also. Yeah. Anything? Any specific points? Hmm. You know, when they go to the school, uh, all the. Uh, meat and uh, non-vegetarian food so they find it very difficult to uh, adjust to that environment so what kind of uh, approach we teach them like uh, you can eat the vegetarian food in front of them they, if they want to share they say sharing like everything is to be shared and they pass on the, uh, it's very difficult for the children because they become the one who's left out and among children they make fun of you and all this kind of thing that means uh, you know, from the beginning of life you have to inculcate the, the very strict principles that we are different. You can get this book, The Higher Taste, which gives all the reason for being vegetarian. You can tell it's better for health. So from the young age they have to learn. Of course the real reason we're vegetarian is because Krishna is vegetarian. And we, we only take what's offered to him. But uh, you can tell that so many people are vegetarians because of heart problems, BP and so many things. They can show the book. Hmm. As Srila Prabhupada said that, uh, uh, that modern schools they call them slaughterhouses. Yeah, Prabhupada called modern schools uh, slaughterhouses because it kills the spiritual tendencies. Parents sometimes tell me no, but children they when when they in elementary school in like seven, eighth grade, there's strong social peer pressure that if you don't show uh, interest. Actually, if you don't have illicit sex, at the age of seven. At the age no, of seven, seven? Seven, eight, grade. Oh, that means fifteen, <laughs> fourteen, fifteen. No, no. Eleven, eleven, twelve, thirteen, like that. Uh -huh. Fourteen. And if you don't have illicit sex and you're not taking drugs, you you're like weird. You're hmm. weird. You 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 feel you. They all sit on your false seat and like. Strong pressure. That's what's happening uh, in elementary schools. Just see. Did you all hear that? So you really want to put your children through this school system? Hmm. I heard there are some uh, Indian couples who recently have returned to India because hmm. they find opportunities are uh, quite comparable. Uh, the same level. Yeah, in India you can have servants, right? <laughs> Instead of washing machines. Oh, they have that also. <laughs> I was thinking in terms of career earlier, they were, they were, it was just not the point they would consider. And also, uh, many of them are returning because of concerns about raising children. Yeah, but India is almost as bad nowadays. Right. Is that what you wanted to say? Maybe a little later, maybe instead of 12, 13, 15, 16. Um, I think we can all experience the difference when we come from the West to India, isn't it? it it's still it's better, despite so many things. Still India is a, a... Of course the Westerners would never agree to this, but still India is more civilized in many ways. And for religious culture and moral culture, it's still better. Although they're going downhill as fast as they can, but actually Indians are not meant for this. So, uh, Indians are meant for 
spiritual life. Birth in India is especially meant for spiritual life. So, uh, it's still better and probably will remain better because however much India goes down, America's going down <laughs> ahead of it. <laughs> and there's no end, you know, there's no... Where's the bottom? If, if the, uh, in the churches they're having homosexual marriages, you know, where's the, where's the bottom? It's, 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 you, know, you, you can't imagine what the bo how low the moral standards can go, but somehow they always manage to find something more degraded. We can't imagine, but they're busy imagining. So still it's better. But in India it's, it's difficult now also, in, in the cities. Even in the villages, the villages are also... The village, there's no peace in the villages anymore. It's all... Everyone's thinking of money and politics and... Uh, on the walls, uh, all over Gujarat, you can see they have advertisements, Garbapat, Deso Rupiah, everywhere. That means abortion, 150 rupees. And they direct you to some clinic. So, this uh, Navratri, which was a religious festival, it's the, that means the time of year when most condoms are sold in Gujarat. And... Uh, in the in the weeks following, they have the maximum abortions. It's it's so. Uh, of course, you may think it's very shocking to speak. Sometimes I'm, I'm told I shouldn't say these things openly because Indians are very cultured. But if we don't talk about it, then how are we ever going to tackle the problem? You know, you be careful. You know, your 13 year old daughter. You don't know. You can't be sure, and they'll insist that they. I must go out. You have to let me go out. And it's, it's a very and unless you have a very strong spiritual atmosphere, you have to among yourselves make a very strong spiritual culture. I've seen that in in India and Dubai and places where they have lots of what we call congregational members or grihastha devotees. That among themselves they make a very strong spiritual culture. They're always inviting each other and they bring their children up and their children have friends among the devotees. I think you're all quite new here because I don't see so many children. I'm quite young, many of you also. I don't see so many children. But uh, that will help very much among yourselves to build up a community. So I, I see the children that are coming out of this, of the devo Grihastha devotees among Indians especially, that they grow up understanding that we are different and we want to be different. And they want to be devotees. So that's the best hope. You all help each other. Sange Shakti Kalo Yuge. In Kali Yoga we get strength from association. Previously for spiritual life you'd have to go alone to the forest, do meditation. But in Kali Yoga they would get strength by going alone. But in Kali Yoga we get strength from helping each other. Sankirtan. Sankirtan means Sangha, everyone coming together. Uh, Hare Krishna, I have a question about the Indian culture has so many gods. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, I'm kind of being drawn to all of them. <laughs> you can't be drawn to all of them because there are, t there are so many you don't even know the names of. Uh, maybe it's like at least few of them. So it's, how do it's like, you know, there is a balance in that also because each I mean, if we take the knife from every god, like so. Yes, well, I, I understand the demigods and. Well, what is what is the aim of your life? You ever thought about that? Uh, maybe just peace. I have no, I'm nothing. You never really thought about it, it seems. No. no. All right. Well, it just came out peace. How can you attain peace? I kind of now what I feel is my stepping stone is like love all. How can you love all? By being nice to everybody and to help whatever I can. How can you help others? When I hear of something and you need or something they can help. You can help all? How can you help all? Not all. Like who you can't you can't help all. Your your definition of loving all is to help all. Mother Teresa in Calcutta was lauded for her love because she wanted to help others. She was famous for helping the, the people living on the streets, but there are, still there are thousands of people living on the streets. 
So you can't you can't help all. So what is the meaning of your loving all? Uh, it's only it's it's only letting go of the selfishness basically. How can you do that? Materialism is because you know before we are more I was kind of more attracted to materialism, but now it's trying to slowly release that a little bit. Not so so how do you plan to do that? I'm trying to search. That's what like I'm kind All of right. trying to. All right. Why don't search. you you're searching, but what if someone has found? They can help. They can help you to find, isn't it? If someone knows what the purpose of life is, they can tell. If you're willing to accept, you can find it. That's why there's Shastra. Mm -hmm. Shastra means to give us directions how to live our life in the best possible way. Now in Shastra we find there are prescriptions for worshipping different devas, for fulfilling material desires. Isn't it? You worship Different devas, they fulfill different desires. But in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, that as long as we're trying to fulfill material desires, we can never get peace. Because we're always desiring one thing, another thing, another thing. Therefore we go to different devas. Krishna states how we can actually get peace. Bhuktaram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram suhridam sarva bhutanam yatva mang shantim ritchati. We have to know three things to get peace that Krishna is the ultimate enjoyer of everything. Instead of thinking, I will go to this deva and that deva to fulfill this desire and that desire, we should understand that everything is meant for Krishna's enjoyment. So when we stop acting for our enjoyment and act for Krishna's enjoyment, uh, then we can get peace. And when we understand that Krishna is Sarva Loka Maheshwara, He is the controller of all the controllers, he is the controller of all the planets. All the devas are servants of Krishna. And when we understand that Krishna is our best friend, and he is the best friend of all living beings, therefore we have no real reason to be in anxiety, and our, our actual happiness can be from, will come from recognizing that Krishna is our best friend, and we don't need all these material desires fulfilled. We simply need to love Krishna. When we understand these things, we can attain peace and actual happiness. So it's a matter of philosophical understanding. Who are we? We are not the body. Uh, we, are, we are Atma. Krishna is Paramatma or Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And even all the Devas, they serve Krishna. Yang Brahma, Varanendra, Rudra, Marata, Stunvanti, Divya, Istavai. All the Devas, uh, Brahma, Rudra, Marud, Indra, Varuna, they all worship Krishna. So when we understand that, then we can focus that our purpose of life should be to satisfy Krishna. This is the ultimate purpose of life. And the devas, they will be satisfied if we worship Krishna. They'll be more satisfied than if we offer them so many different pujas, because they're devotees of Krishna. Yeah, but my kind of conflict right now is, okay, I'm kind of at uh, going to Sat Shirdi Sai Baba, Sakhi Sai Baba and I find it more kind of with my couple of months experience that you know I'm only thing is the love where I'm able to understand a little easier but when I try <laughs> to listen to Bhagavad Gita and all it's like it's beautiful but it's kind of overwhelming also sometimes. So That's why I'm, I'm asking you, I'm asking you try to understand what is the ultimate purpose of life as confirmed by all previous acharyas confirmed by all scriptures, you won't find the name of Shirdi Sai Baba mentioned anywhere in Shastra because he's not Bhagavan. Bhagavan is Krishna. So you may get some feeling there and other people may get feeling from Satya Sai Baba and other people may get feeling from this Ravi Shankara now there's this new so-called Kalki Avatar. We may get feelings like that but feelings can be misleading also. That what we think is the best for us may not necessarily be because after all we're in Maya in this material world we're in Maya so therefore in Bhagavad Gita Krishna gives us the philosophical understanding which it's we're actually supposed to approach this with not only with feeling but with intelligence to understand what is the actual goal of life 
So uh, if we understand this and uh, and uh, mold our lives accordingly, we can actually attain eternal peace, which we can never get from going to any Baba or Bapa or whatever, if they're not pure devotees of Krishna. So people go to Shirdi Sai Baba also for material gain, but it will not. They may get also some some mystic shakti is there. Otherwise, it must be something, otherwise people are going, but it's not the ultimate goal. Krishna is the ultimate, He is the Supreme. And we can only, because we are parts and parcels of Krishna, we can only be fully satisfied by fully taking shelter of Krishna and no other place. Hare Krishna. I think we'll finish there because it's getting on. Time is ticking on, as usual. And one day, the clock will go tick, 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 and our time will be up. So better chant Hare Krishna now. Hare Krishna.